Hello guys, welcome back to movie reviews. So we're back with the fifth episode of course, and we have another bill. Oh, obviously, the routine, obviously. So let's just let's just break through. I'm gonna try and breeze these through actually, just to, just recording time really. So first we've got is Van Wise Boulevard from 1979. This is directed by William Sachs, who would later on to direct the science fiction core classic, which is Galaxina in 1980, obviously. Um this film, what this basically film is, it's basically a teenage exploitation film, really, to be honest. And um, it's set around Van, Van Wyss Boulevard, basically to hold, do the whole racing circuit, really, at that time, really, especially in the, in the, in the 70s, really. Uh, Focus on a guy called Bobby, who is from the Midwest and ends up going to Calif um, down to Van, Van Wyss, you know, because he was intrigued. Uh, actually, what the, what the racing culture is like down there, so he ends up going, ends up going down there. He meets a girl called Moon and challenges to a race, and they end up well. Basically, this all started, but they end up being arrested by an officer called Zaz, police officer called Zaz. And um, while there, there's always there's a few other characters as well. You've also you've got um, what was it? Her best her best friend, Moon's best friend. I forgot the name of course. You've got Cooch, his real name's Leon, and you've got Greg as well. This sort of uh, let's say let's say like a ginger sapphire loser really, who. They all end up in the in the in the cells, really, um, and they sort of like I know. Well, why don't we sort of do something to uh, do something together? We'll, we'll go to this amusement park, this theme park, and about the revolution, and so they end up going. Um, Greg obviously challenges Kush to go, uh, challenges him to try the revolution. Think he's chicken, which he <laughs> claims claims you know I ain't fucking chicken. So he en ends on the right. He ends on he ends on vomiting. He does and. Um, Basically, you know, hijinks ensue. Really, there's quite a few hijinks in this film, of course, because obviously you've got the main sort of thing about the um, the the teenagers, really, sort of meeting, bonding, really. But you've also got this B plot of Officer Zaz, who basically ends up meeting a girl called Wanda, I think, and basically um, ends up she ends up steal, uh, ends up well, stealing his belongings, some of his belongings, and ends up handcuffing him in his underwear on the beach of his of his cop car. And over the course of the movie, he ends up trying some ways to try and, you know, try and get free or get released. Hippie steals some of his stuff. A dog, uh, if you know, buries his keys in the sand. It's not until his mother, Zaz's mother, actually comes down and tries to um, free him. He's like, oh, son, I found you. And that sort of thing, of course. Um, but also throughout the movie as well, you also get uh, the blossoming relationship or the romance between Moon and Bobby as well included. You get the hijinks involving Greg as well, involving Lockjaw. Which he goes to get a salami sound like it goes to a deli, and he over uh, some like and so I think the I think the the oh, what do you call the vendor sort of overpowers him with some with a lot of uh, meat and stuff like he thinks he's a, I think he thinks he's Italian and stuff really so he ends up by himself gets stuck in lockjaw goes to the hospital you meet this black nurse of course who basically says you basically it's meant to be funny but it sort of drags on it's meant to be drags on a little bit really um obviously so. You know, it's meant to be played for gags, really, but it's a bit sort of half assed in some regards, really. That see that scene really in particular. Um, with the whole you know, trying to spread the nurse say he's got locked jaw, really. Um ends up getting getting it done, but ends up getting stuck stuck again, so he ends up, you know, um so that's one thing. But also at the end of the end of the um the film, um I think Bobby wants to really wants to try and race race moon, really, just to um to see how fast they go, and in the end, he ditches his van. He basically just leaves in Seoul, lets it trail off at the end of a cliff, you know, and uh, just destroys it really. But that ends up winning Moon's heart again, really, of course, and this whole friendship really. Um, I like with them, really. So, this all like end up being cool again, being like, yay, great happy times. So, it ends up, it ends up on that sort of front, really. So, my understanding of this film really comes from uh, the actress of, of Cindy Wood, who was a playmate in about 1973, really. So, it's another one of those films that feature play by playmates, really, uh, which seems to be like a theme, really, because we had about three films already I've covered in this series about that one. And so, you know what? Because <laughs> I remember, I just remember looking at it, I feel like, oh, it might be interesting, I might just give it a little watch, really. And I end up enjoying it really. I end up having, it's a, it's one of those films you feel like it's forgotten about really, because you get a lot you get all this all, all this other stuff really. But Van Wyss, Van Van Wyss Boulevard is pretty good. It's actually a pre a pretty decent teen film really. Like, I don't know if it's like comedy drama, more comedy really I would say. And um, I do like it actually. The soundtrack's pretty good as well actually because I I recently listened to it, 
uh, it was, was released on Violet Wars, and it's, it has that sort of disco edge to it, very funk and everything else, you know, and um, the whole title, I think the whole title thing, of course, involving, you know, some guy saying, bye bye, and that sort of thing, in like a, in like a disco beat. Pretty good. If you want to check out the soundtrack, it's worth looking, it's full, it's full on, just check on YouTube, really. Uh, worth checking out. Um, yeah. I just think I had a pretty decent time with it, really. I mean, I've been looking at a lot of teen movies from the 70s anyway, just recently, just to, uh, not, just have a look, have just, re just really see what was going on, really, because, um, you know, you know, see what it's like. I don't know where that rabbit hole, or I ended up in that rabbit hole anyway, but, uh, I mean, it's pretty all right, really. It's pretty, de pretty decent film. Um, yeah, really, I think it's all right, really. Um, nothing, nothing else to really say about it. But I feel like hot rods and stuff like that, racing... Basically, that sort of thing. Well, sort of, really. It does involve racing, but it has, like, this sort of comedy romance thing on top of it, really. You know, just really mounting the top bit, top bit, really. The racing thing is sort of, like, bookend, it bookends the film, really, in a way. Um, so, yeah, it's worth checking out. It was released on DVD in the UK, which I was surprised to see, actually. I feel like, oh, okay. So, that was released on DVD, so, but, uh, yeah, it's a decent film, really. Decent sentence film, decent cast, really. So, it's it's worth it might be worth seeing if you're into that sort of thing, but there we go. So that's Van Weiss Boulevard. Next up we've got is Blowout from 1981. So this is a Brian De Palma film, which I never really covered Brian De Palma on the channel before anyway, so this is interesting. I've seen some of his films before. I mean, I've seen Mission Impossible, for, um, you know, from 96. Scarface is another one. And what's the other, what's another one? Brian De Palma, what else did he do? No, he did Mission to Mars as well. He also did, mm, what do you think? He also did Body Double as well, which actually, it sort of, it sort of has a thing, I mean, Body Double has a little key thing of how I discovered the film, really. I was meant to watch that film anyway, just to really just check it out, see what it's like. I sort of got, got a little bit bored of it, really, then I moved on to Blowout, really, and I really got invested in it, really. I think it's a pretty decent film, a really good film. It's one of John, I think it's one of John Travolta's best movies, actually, in my opinion. Um, it does have, it's got a Hitchcockian feel to it as well, but I think, I think the Palma mentioned in a few interviews that it was meant to be like that, really. Um, but it sort of just re uh, has a very sort of enjoyable edge to it. Re uh, not really, well, not really, yeah, enjoyable edge, I'm thinking of a different film entirely. I'm sorry, I'm tired, really. Uh, you know, work, really, everything else, so. Um, it does, it has that suspense of it, it does. It builds that suspense for the movie. You get so the story goes is that this um, record engineer, the sound engineer working for a film company, goes out one night and just records sound. Then he witnesses a car crash that lands in the river. He goes out and saves this woman called Sally, played by Nancy Allen. And the government are trying to bring him down, obviously, because the hiding stuff, really, because this is meant to be like a, a candidate for like a, a presidential candidate or mayor candidate, really. And um, he got killed really, but they're trying to cover him up and make him not see this this woman called Sally, who he's just, just you know, brought out of the car of a single car in, in the river, really, you know, trying not, you know, not to be killed, really. And over the course of the film, he's trying to approve what has happened, of course, you know, was it sabotage, Did was it assassination attempt or anything like that, you know, and uh, he pieces it together, for, like, using his sound recording they record, that he's used, but also photos, I think from something like a newspaper article or something like that, and he makes like an animated film, basically just to um, re basically make his own, he makes his own animated film using that sort of, um, um, record, the record, several recordings and, and these whole uh, photos to make it a, like effective picture of him, like, oh, I see where you, you know what's happened here, of course. And so that's basically what he's trying to do, try to prove the, try and prove the answers, try and make, you know, try and get the actual evidence out, really, of what really happened to this person, really. But on the other hand of the story, on, but also on the other, on the other hand of the, on the story, you got this other guy who's trying to, he's basically hunting around, garroting people, really, or many women, really, and um, it sort of becomes like a, sort of like a meets a, a key player, or like the main antagonist for the film, really, in some regards. Um, so yeah, but I really, I do, as a film, I thought it was pretty good, good experience. I was watching it all the way through, really good stuff. I thought Nancy Allen was pretty good, because this is 1981, so I only knew her from Robocop, the Robocop trilogy, you know, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think of that, what else can I think of? Well, actually, there's a film I saw recently, which I'll 
maybe talk about another time, really. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's nothing else to really say. I mean, spoilers alert, obviously. Lance Allen does die at, at, the end, at the end of the movie. She does get, get corroded, she does, and obviously um, ends up the fire between Javolta and that sort of assassin, really. Um, but... I had a decent, it's good, it's good actually. I would say it's one of the farmers' bad movies. I would say, you know, some people may disagree, some people might say Scarface, Mission Impossible, whatever else the third one is, you know, it could you know, fur contender might be. Um, you know what? Fair play, but I really enjoyed this actually, and I do think John Travolta is really good in this film, really. Because I've only seen, I've seen him in a few films, of course, uh, like, of course, obviously, Grease, Face Off with Nicolas Cage. Broken Arrow, I think, is another one. Um, and also one of his recent ones, when he, when he was bald, really. I think it was, was it From Paris We Love? I think that's like the last proper film I probably saw him in. I saw him, actually. Maybe. I think so. I don't know. And Carrie is, actually, Carrie is, well, I keep forgetting Carrie. I always keep thinking Carrie is a Brand Palmer film, really, in some in some regards. I keep thinking it's like it's done by a different, totally different director, really. And Joel Twins and that, really. So, decent, really. Um... So yeah, but I think it's a good one, really. It's worth checking out. So there we go, guys. That I've been talking about Van Rijs Boulevard from 1979 and Blowout from 1981. Thank you for watching. See you for the next video.